Hello everyone, it is my honor today to present to you our work Nuke2Vec Learning Representations of Nuclei in Histopathology Images with Contrastive Loss. We all know that tumor microenvironment plays an important role in the growth and metastasis of cancer. One aspect of tumor microenvironment is the spatial interactions between various kinds of different nuclei in cancer tissue. For example, the infiltration of tumor cells by lymphocytes. Whole slide histopathology images provide a holistic morphological picture for cancer tissue. Therefore, it serves as an important tool both for basic research and a clinical assessment of cancer. Recent development in computational pathology, including nuclear segmentation and nucleus uh, classification, enables large-scale delineation of nuclear map, map in whole slide images. Therefore, it provides us a new opportunity to study tumor microenvironment in a more quantitative way. Currently, all the nucleus classification methods only classify nucleus into one of several categories. For example, in Harvard, an excellent work by Graham et al., each nucleus were segmented and then classified into one of six categories, among which there are tumor, inflammatory, and connective nucleus. We know that there is a much more diverse population of nuclei in cancer tissue. We know this from other technologies such as single-cell RNA-seq or multiplex tissue imaging. But sometimes these diversity can be present uh, in terms of the morphological variations of individual nucleus in histopathology images. Sometimes these morphological uh, features are distinct and clear. For example, here are the differences among different blood cells in the bone marrow, bone marrow tissue. But most of the time, the morphological distinctions uh, between different subtypes can be more subtle and not well characterized in a standard pathology uh, textbook. So it is our interest to learn representations of nuclei in histopathology images, such that these representations can capture uh, more subtle morphological differences, such as those that distinguish uh, tumor cells from different cancer types. Further, we also want to use the, the, these representations to conduct a fine-grained classification of clustering of nuclei. This could be particularly useful for study the diversity of disease processes and identify clinically meaningful subgroup of patients. Uh, some has proposed a supervised approach to conduct fine-grained classification of nuclei. For example, in this work by Gamper et al., uh, which introduced the pan nuke data set, such a, such a scheme was proposed to collect uh, uh, annotations of fine grained classification of nuclei from pathologists. But we argue that such a scheme could have many drawbacks. For example, it is often very time consuming and difficult to annotate uh, all these nucleus into these fine grained uh, uh, classes. And it might be prone to inter observer variations, and the model would require a huge amount of label to obtain a reasonable accuracy. In addition, uh, it may also be unable to detect potentially new clusters or groups of uh, nuclei that shares uh, morphological uh, similarities that were previously unknown or not well characterized. Therefore, we propose a representation learning method that leverages the contrastive learning uh, diagram that recently popularized, uh, popularized in the deep learning community. With this uh, contrastive learning method, we can learn the representations of nuclei in an unsupervised manner. This is the overall structure of our proposal. We first collect random tiles from host slide images, and then we perform nuclear segmentation with HoverNet. Then we extract nuclear images centered around each segmented nucleus, and then we use this contrastive learning, a representation learning method uh, we, develop, we developed called Nuke2Vec to learn uh, embedding vector uh, from each of the nuclear images. And after that, uh, we will cluster all the, uh, we will conduct fine-grained clustering of all the nucleus based on their embedding vectors. And then we will sample 100 uh, nucleus instances from each of the clusters and have them reviewed by a board-certified pathologist uh, to determine whether these nucleus from each cluster share similar morphological features. Our long-term goal is to construct slide-wise features based on the spatial distribution of all the, uh, <clears throat> based on spatial distribution of the nucleus from all the clusters discovered by Nuke2Vec and use them for downstream clinical task prediction, such as um, a patient survival analysis. So our representation learning method is mostly adapted from these contrastive representation learning uh, framework 
uh, where the contrastive loss was formulated as a combination of the so-called alignment loss and the uniformity loss. So the basic idea of uh, contrastive learning, as many of you might be familiar with, is that certain image transformations, such as random rescaling or color jittering, should not change the identity of the object we're interested in in the image. So the alignment loss here uh, will encourage representation vector of image transformations from the same image to be close to each other in the embedding space, while the uniformity loss would encourage uh, representation vector of random Im uh, images to be uh, distributed approximately uniformly in a high dimensional sphere. The intuition is that the representation learned this way could be more uh, could be useful for uh, unsupervised clustering or classification. So we applied a series of standard image transformations, including uh, random rescaling, color jittering, uh, gauss blurring, or random flipping, etc. We also proposed the, the background group. The idea is that we want to learn the particular um, morphological features associated with the nuclear itself, rather than the features of its background. So for each uh, nuclear image, we first generate the bounding box center uh, based on this um, of, of the nucleus based on the segmentation mask predicted by Harvard. Then we keep the regions inside the bounding box unchanged while we replace the background, uh, the regions outside the bounding box with an uh, image of the same size from nearby tissue. So this way we perturb the background of the nucleus, but not too much to the extent that, that the context wouldn't make sense anymore for this nucleus. So here I showed you uh, eight by eight uh, examples of nuclear instances where this aforementioned the series of um, Standard Im image transformations were applied to each, each instance randomly. For the batch to the right here, the background replacement transformation is also applied. So to train our nuclear work model, we selected 10 most prevalent type of cancer from, the, from our MSK impact patient cohort. This include bladder cancer, breast cancer, colorectal cancer, etc. And then for each cancer type, we select a certain number of slides, and for each slide, we select a certain number of image tiles, and then we conduct uh, nuclear segmentation, and eventually we randomly select 100k nuclear instances for each of the cancer types. This eventually leads to a data set of 1 million nuclear instances from the 10 cancer types. So with this data set, we train our nuclear web uh, model as described earlier. We want to evaluate uh, the usefulness of the uh, embedding vector learned by our nuclear web model. So the first thing we did was to visualize the uh, nearest neighbors in the embedding space of randomly selected new nuclear instances. A good embedding should put uh, nuclear instances that shares the similar morphology uh, close to each other in the embedding space. So we compared the embedding learned by nuclear web with two other uh, embedding vectors we constructed for each nuclear instances. The first one is a hand engineer feature, which is a 27-dimensional vector that captures certain geometric and pixel statistic features uh, based on the nuclear image and the segmentation mask. The second one is a contrastive learning method uh, uh, applying the previously mentioned uh, standard image transformation but without the proposed background replacement. I showed you here four examples of nuclear instances, each have a distinctive morphological feature. The first one is a stroma, elongated stroma cell. The second and third are tumor cells with a visible nucleolus in the center, with the second one slightly bigger than the third. And the last one is, the, uh, is a tumor cell with a white content in the center, which reflects a, a, a lack of uh, Hamotocelian uh, uh, optic. In each of the instances, uh, our, the embedding vector learned by nuclear web performs the, uh, the best uh, qualitatively in terms of capturing the said uh, nuclear morphology. The next thing we did was uh, uh, conduct fine grain clustering of the nucleus based on the embedding vector uh, that learned by nuclear web. In particular, we performed the hierarchical clustering with war linkage, and we clustered all the nucleus into 140 uh, clusters. And these 140 clusters can be organized into 11 main branches. And by our expert review, we found that each of the branch uh, have a well-defined morphological feature. And within each branch, the nuclei can further be grouped into these uh, individual clusters based on more sub subtle uh, morphological differences. For example, this blue branch here are mostly lymphocytes and the pink branch are mostly uh, elongated stroma cells. Some of them are elongated tumor cells. Most interestingly, the olive branch appears to be um, many clusters of tumor cells, each with their own uh, morphological feature. In addition, our method can also assign clusters for new 
uh, nuclear instances. <clears throat> for any given new, uh, for any given new segmented or uh, detected nuclear instance, we can first uh, extract its nuclear image. Then we will apply the pre-trained nuclear wag model to compute its representation vector. Then we can comp uh, find the 1,023 nearest neighbors among the 1 million nucleus we use to train nuclear wag model. Eventually, we'll assign the cluster for this new uh, nuclear instance uh, by taking a majority vote of all the clusters of the over 1,000 nearest neighbors. As you can see, the, for the test data set, uh, all the nucleus are assigned to a cluster that bears its particular morphological features as discovered from the training data set. We also looked at the clusters with the most imbalanced distribution among the 10 cancer types, among which uh, cluster 49 and, 40, uh, and 50 are mostly from glioma. This reflects the fact that glioma is a uh, distinctive non-epithelial malignancy with its own unique uh, cytomorphology. And cluster, almost half of the cluster 52 belongs to endometrial cancer. And most of these nucleus are stroma cells from the muscle tissue, which accounts for a large portion of the uh, tissue in endometrial slides. For cluster one, 116, the major uh, type uh, is colorectal cancer. Uh, many of these nucleus are surrounded by mucins in, in their cytoplasma region. This reflects the feature of nucleus of, uh, of tumor cells from the GI tract. And finally, cluster 15 and 14 seems to be predominantly uh, from uh, uh, cancers of female organs such as breast and ovarian. This could uh, be interesting for further investigation. So uh, finally, as I said in the beginning, our long-term goal is, for, is to construct slide-wise features based on the spatial distribution of nucleus from all these uh, subtypes. And just to show you the complexity of the spatial distribution, I visualized a uh, region, a uh, small region from, from the whole slide image, uh, and all the detected nucleus are marked by a white dot with nucleus from the four particular uh, clusters or highlighted with four different colors, among which we have cluster five, uh, which is marked uh, by the blue dots, uh, are mostly lymphocytes, are all lymphocytes, and the other three are tumor cells with uh, uh, different morphological features. So one interesting question here is whether the subdivision of tumor cells into different uh, clusters could be helpful, could f provide more information uh, that could be useful for downstream uh, clinical uh, task performance. With that, I conclude my uh, presentation, and I would like to thank all former and current members of the Fuchs Lab for fruitful discussions and uh, help uh, in this project. And I welcome all the questions. Thank you very much for your attention.